I can watch you safely. I am the supervisor. Have a seat. You have no reason to be ordering me around if there's no crime that's been committed. Have a seat so I can talk to everybody safely. This is what I was talking about with Joe. Imagine, imagine, this time it's a woman. So, a woman going up to a grown man saying, hey, sit down on the floor. Come on, man. Get out of here. Who are you? Tell me what crime you're suspecting. I don't have to listen to what damn thing you're telling me. Right. See it on my car. Sir, last time, can I have your name, please, now? No. Well, when we're here to offer a call that we get dispatched to, at that moment, we have a requirement okay, to perform an investigation. When they get called out, they have a duty to perform an investigation, but they never perform the investigation. They think performing the investigation is getting your information uh, to make sure you're okay. Uh, to make sure you, they want to get your information to figure out if they can put a crime, if they can either take you to jail or it, it's, I don't see. We need your ID to help us figure out that you're not guilty of a crime that hasn't even been committed. <laughs> like what? I tried to explain this to you, and now you're still it. arguing with her. You call a police officer a Nazi, you say we have no right to do this, to say we're doing criminal things because we're doing our job, is an issue. Yeah. You do. You have good. that right not to say anything. And if you choose to and take that right, then you end up in jail. That's what I'm trying to work through with you. We, we understand that there is there is there's a, a Parlin, group of individuals that feel that they don't have to abide by the law. Okay, they feel that there there there's constitutional rights and all this other stuff. We understand that, okay? But you're not seeing it for what it is. Welcome back to you the Civil Rights Lawyer Channel. Is. When I say that freedom is scary, this is exactly what I mean. Just because somebody is scared and calls the police, or just because the police who then show up are scared does not affect one's constitutional rights. Let's, let's pause right there. Um, for, you know, for the trolls, for... But you, you hear it firsthand from, from a civil rights lawyer just because, because the cops uh, reason to make us uh, give up our Fourth Amendment just because I don't why would it's just because it's so crazy that cops really some cops really think that but most the cops a lot of cops don't think that but they just think people are stupid and a lot of people give up their rights because they don't know their rights and it happens so much to the cop starts to automatically expect people to give up their rights then when people don't it catches them off guard and then you know it affects their ego Somebody called the cops just because the cops want to investigate something that does not then mean that a person can be detained and forcibly ID'd as a result of that. This footage comes to us from Nick Fela, and this occurred very close to where I grew up in Cocoa, Florida. I grew up just down the road. There are plenty of cops there with really very little to do. So you have stuff like this that happens. So Nick is just sitting there. This is back in 2016, but he's been pissed about this for years and he finally just got the body cam footage. I think this footage really can be instructive because this, there is so much confusion on this issue. Just because the police are called, just because they say they're conducting an investigation, does that mean that they can do all of this like they did to Nick? But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Rocket Money. I'm really bad about subscribing to services online and then forgetting about them. It's too much to keep track of, especially when I'm trying to save up for my kids' college funds and also cigars. All right. that helps you sell bills. 
content subscribers also use it in a point for civil matters with money rights. County Sergeant Amy Moon arrested me and impounded my vehicle for no ID while sitting at a lakeside. I offered ID if she had reasonable, articulable suspicion, which she did not, but tried to pretend that she did. Turns out from the arrest warrant affidavit that an anonymous caller was suspicious that the women that he was with, who were in their 30s in reality, may have been underage, which Amy Moon determined on the scene that they were not. And also this anonymous caller suspected drug activity, which was in no way occurring. Sergeant Amy Moon, during this encounter, did in fact procure his driver's license from the women and then ran his plates that matched his ID, and she was holding his ID in her hand, but still retaliated against him for not saying his name, even though she knew who he was and that she had no reasonable suspicion at any point. Go again with the BS. What's doing, guys? Come down off the top of the van. Why? Come, come down so I can talk to you. Boy, you can talk to me up here. I can't hear you. Come down so I can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, come down here so I can talk to you. That's your come they, down they, here. They, they, you too, ma'am. Do you have your ID on you, sir? What crime do you suspect has been committed? Okay, tell you what, have a seat. Have a seat. We're not going to do this. Have a seat. You can arrest me if you'd like. I don't want to arrest you. Okay. Well, been a crime. We don't need to make a difficult. Why are you us? Have a seat so I can watch you safely. Yeah. Unless there's been a crime that you're suspecting. Have a seat. I am the supervisor. Have a seat. Listen, you have no reason to be ordering me around if there's no crime that's been committed. Have a seat so I can talk to everybody safely. Unless you can tell me what crime that you're suspecting, I don't have to listen to what damn thing you're telling me. All right. Keep your hands out of your pocket. Have a seat. Have a seat. What are you arresting me for? You're not under arrest, but if you I'm don't want to, arrest? if you don't want to listen, if I can't go freely, it's called being under arrest. Have a seat. Coco, one detain. Stand at the van. When a police officer asks you for identification, I don't know if you're a real cop. Let me see your ID. You could be. You could be. Seriously. No, seriously. I haven't seen any of your information. I haven't committed any crime. This isn't freaking Nazi Germany. I don't need to show you no damn papers. Forty-seven step up. Don't move. I'm under arrest. Don't move. Ladies, do you have your ID? How old are you? Okay, how old are you? Okay, hang on. Man, man. He got, he got a couple girls on top of his band. Living life and you come ruin it. By putting, man, yes, this is ridiculous. All you have to do is provide ID. That's all you have to do. I don't know who the hell you are. I don't know if you're a real cop. I need you want ID himself Please either. So say, work on hand uh, ID himself. Anytime a police officer stops to check out with somebody, for whatever reason we get called here, we gladly explain it to people. But first things first, which is our safety and yours, we need to identify who we're talking to. Yeah. So is there any reason why he wouldn't tell me who he is? In your 30s, then? Where's your ID Last time. Can I have your name, please, now? Because if you don't give us your name, you're going to go to jail. This is your last chance. If you don't identify yourself, you're going to the county jail, sir. Listen to me. If you don't identify yourself, you will go to the county jail for resisting. Do you understand that? For resisting? Yes. Okay. 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 So what I'm going to do. I want you to realize that this is criminal what she's doing to me. The only reason I'm complying is under duress. Under threat. Okay. Nobody is threatening you other than telling you Florida statute. You have to identify yourself to the police officer. That's why I actually. Yeah, if you're committing a crime. 
for Florida statute. Oh, yeah. Can I back your car for right now? You know, see that. Does he have a warrant or something? Is that why he doesn't want to tell anybody? You know, or something. Does he have a bad driver's license on probation? Anything that he doesn't want to identify himself to? No, simply okay, because I have a Fourth Amendment right mm -hmm. not to. Reference to the 28 out of Nebraska. Coming back, no record found so far. Um, this this is my boss, this is Sergeant Moon. Okay. I, I can't explained to him part. that. I explained to him that. He doesn't seem to understand there, that or he can't be here in a bathing suit. And I explained to him that you have every right to lawfully detain him in conduct an investigation to, in an attempt to, one, to one, start here to figure out exactly what you're doing. With, with her being a sergeant, that means everybody up under her is going with this BS. So she's a sergeant, so... What I say, she's been on the force at least minimum 10 years. And she's been going around for 10 years doing this to people. For 10 years, she, over 10 years, she's been doing this. And the, I don't, the reason why I don't like uh, let me. I don't want to say this uh, because it's going to sound politically, you know, and you know it's not going to sound right polit politically. But I'm not a fan of female officers going to cause for for male subjects because. She's already going to be afraid. This sergeant is definitely afraid. She's definitely afraid, and she's going to be more likely to harm someone based on her fear. Now, it's the same. It's the same with uh, you know. It's it's a lot of male officers that are afraid as well. But her being a female officer is, is going to be more of a more of a it's going to be more, it's going to cause more of a response. Say, say, uh, he started resisting and she couldn't, she wasn't strong enough to, uh, deal with that. Well, she's going to use deadly force. Other officers, you know, male officers may be strong enough to actually deal with him and not have to use deadly force. If y'all get what I'm saying. Which so this, this is my call. You, okay. you, 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 you don't want to believe me? You're more than welcome to believe her. Uh, I got a local number here. Gotcha. Colorado works a little bit differently. Uh, obviously. Uh, it, 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 they are big man. Here's Never. the thing when you go to a different state, you have to abide by those state laws. You don't have an option. You have to yeah, abide by state laws. I'm pretty sure this is not a state issue. This is a federal issue. I'm not obliged to have an ID unless I'm suspect. Well, when we're here to offer a call that we get dispatched to, at that moment, we have a requirement to perform an investigation. We cannot do that if people are not willing to cooperate and identify themselves. Yeah, man. That's all it is. Identifying yourself. You are required. It's not a casual contact. I got sent here. These officers got sent here for a specific reason, which you are hindering. Look, man. Hey. That's, that's the crime right there now. I tried to explain this to you, and now you're, you're still arguing with her. Yeah, but I can't. I like that. I don't, I don't understand where the, the she's she's explaining. That's a good one. Hashtag Kevlar. Stop. Now I don't understand where there's a block. There's a block there, bro. I was happy to give it to her. I didn't even idea. You don't understand where there's a block. He didn't. But she does not have to tell you what she's here for until everything. She's got an officer safety issue. Look, look, look at this idiot. Look at look at him trying to trying to make 
trying to sound like something in front of her. Bro, if you don't go on about your... I don't want to hear that BS, man. Y'all, it, go ahead and do what you're about to do, man. Yeah, yeah. She's out here by herself. There's three people. She, she, look, there it is, right there. There it is, right there. I knew until it. everything. She's got an officer safety issue. She's out here by herself. There's three people. Okay. Right there, there's three people. Three people. Two women and, and a dude that y'all rolled up on. <laughs> Change it around. There's a three of us and there's one of you. Right or wrong? It is. You what I'm you gonna tell you anything. It is like that. That's what's going on right now. I'm just waiting on vehicle information still to come back. Oh, come on, man. Mike? Came back with nothing. So far. I really didn't want to take it. What are you talking about? She's not by herself. She's not done. Or taser, and 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 still yet to tell me his name. Really if she decides that? to hurt somebody, she's not by herself. His girlfriend gave him up. She got to no, his, his girlfriend gave him up. Your ID. I leave her. He said, "I'm gonna give it to him." Don't give up your friend. I don't. I don't get the whole sovereign citizen thing. I don't. Know. I think he's. I think he just feels that we have to tell him why we're stopping. Units on here, 1013. What the fuck? <laughs> Have you understood any of this yet? Yeah. It's Florida, yeah. This is not Colorado. You cannot buy, go by what you think in Colorado. In Florida, when a police officer gets dispatched to a call, we have every right to determine who we are dealing with. You have no choice but to go by Florida law, not Colorado. So because you thought... I don't have any right to identify who I am dealing with as a police you officer. Know. You're now sitting in a car detained. Do because you see your, the, the issue to call a police officer a Nazi? To say we have no right to do this? You to are. say we're doing criminal things because you we're are. doing our job? It's Isn't not it? your job. Because it, it would take me two seconds to shut this door and take you to jail. Exactly. So, I told you in the beginning, I don't want to do that. I yes, just told you, you that, but you refuse to give me your name still. Because I don't have to. When a police officer checks out with you, there's a reason matter. for it. If you it, want it, to. What do you mean it's a reason for it? It's you, because the, a random person said something and y'all showed up. That's the reason. A random person say, hey, this person doing is. We, I think they might be doing this and uh, blah 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 blah, which really the person who called 911, like, um, who said it? But basically, they were just hating on him for for having women on top of his uh van, you know, having fun, enjoying life, and y'all mess up the whole entire party. Oh, I think they're doing drugs and blah blah blah, and they're underage girls. Both of the women, thirty years old, man, get out of here. No way you thought they were on the age. And okay, may, may, maybe maybe that's a good thing that you call it because you thought they were underage. May, maybe they look younger than uh, their actual age. Okay, once the officer gets there and asks the woman how old are they, both of them say 30. Like, okay, everything's over now. Leave me alone. Bye. They didn't even they didn't even need to get off the van for her to uh ask those questions. Them getting down from the van was just a power dynamic. She didn't she didn't like them being up high and above looking at her uh versus that's why she tried to get him to sit on the floor. Like get get out of here, man. These weak ass uh power dynamic moves that they try to make to make themselves make themselves feel superior over people is BS. Anybody who needs to do that is a insecure, uh, small person. If you if you got to do all that to make yourself, uh, like, feel like you're above somebody or whatever, that like I know that that person is 
you know, you, you're a weak person if you got to do that. That's why anytime that I experience somebody like that, I know that they're a weak person. Right. <laughs> right. If it if it salutes like, like come on. Come on now. You you know that. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like they just exactly the argument about refusing to identify yourself you'll end up in handcuffs in the back of a police car if you want to hand over your id there you go officer what's the problem today no then you can figure no. out what the problem here you go here you go officer what's the problem so and she got into this position just to do this bs problem is but you have you're a choice of doing that or continuing the argument that you started and well then you're in handcuffs in the back of a car so basically she just said she retaliating against you for for talking back you don't talk back to police get the fuck bro at what point has anybody beat you or, or, or threatened to arrest you yes i, I can i can arrest you if i don't submit to Right. Arbitrary. Yeah, some, some BS. It's not some arbitrary decision when a police officer asks for your identification on a call. Yes, yes. That's yes, not an arbitrary law. decision. That's the law. What? They don't know the law. So I hate that the fact that they say that's the law. No, it's not the law. It's, uh, get out of here, man. And I'm still here trying to make you understand. Right. It's nothing I just, I don't, I don't stand under that. Because it doesn't make sense. Uh, versus somebody just harassing you. You do. You have that right not to say anything. And if you choose to and take that right, then you end up in jail. That's what I'm trying to work through with you. Wow. You have that. Did you? Wow. So if you exercise your rights, she said, basically, if you exercise your rights, she's taking you to jail. Is that not what y'all just heard? Right to completely keep your mouth shut and not say a word to me, but you're gonna end up in jail. I know, and I it's not worth right. that, is it? Is it worth it to you to go to jail, Don, to identify yourself to me? I, I mean, so I don't know your name, so I'll just go with Hey You. My name is Michael. Okay. She's trying. We, we understand that there is there is there's, there's, there's a, a group of individuals that feel that they don't have to abide by the laws. Okay, they feel that they're they're. There's constitutional rights and all this other stuff. We oh, understand, no. okay? Yeah, but you're not seeing that. it for what it is, okay? She but came here for an investigation. The they feel like okay? She had every stop right. Feeding me. Stop trying to, to feed me bullshit. You are, yeah, I would have been. What you're bro, doing I don't want to nothing that say. And why you're doing it. As long as those things are, are everything is figured out and squared away, she would have been all right. You know what? I can I can go about the rest of the day hey, here listen, listen, and say you would have been on your merry way. This made it difficult. You felt that there's some type of constitutional you right that, that, you that you don't have to, to, to abide by her request, her lawful orders to give you your ID. You're now interfering with an investigation. You're resisting her without violence. Yeah, man. She's That's out here by herself. There's three people, which adds to everything. And I guarantee you, I, I've been to Colorado, bro. I've been, to Colorado, I've been to Fort Carson, Colorado. I promise you, if I would have told a Colorado cop, hey, I'm not giving you my ID, resisting is resisting in no matter what state you go. I've been to Texas, been to Colorado, been all over. I promise you, if I'd have told a cop in any state, I'm not going to give you my ID, and he's there for a lawful purpose, I'd have been in handcuffs. That's a lie. Uh, well, it might not be a lie. It might be true but that doesn't mean it's lawful you you be in handcuffed but it was unlawfully um in the truck you 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 would deal with all that you get to the you get to court and all that 
and the prosecutor will go ahead and drop those charges because they know it's bullshit. But you now you have you still have to deal with the BS of going through all that. But um, look look how you looking like, bro. This some bullshit, and and then have you second guessing what you already know, and like maybe maybe uh. Cause you think you do, you don't know every single law out there, so you think like maybe no, no, no. He's the, what he's saying is some complete BS. And oh, you know, I've been to Colorado, Texas, all of this. And if I don't get my ID when the cop is there lawfully, blah 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 blah. You don't have to give up your ID unless you are under arrest, and you need to be under arrest for a valid reason, not just some. Oh, they feel like, no. So, uh, see, I didn't know why she was here. I asked her several times. Never got okay, but then, th see, there you go. That goes to there's three people and she's out by herself. Look at him. A police okay. officer will always... This... She's explain things to you once the situation okay. is safe. What's the situation? They will never not explain okay. it to you. They the will requirements never are to keep lying. you safe and keep you safe. Safety comes in first. Once I know who I'm dealing with, then I tell you, okay, this is why oh, I get called out here. We're not going to just randomly do this. Exactly. We are going to explain everything. And they lied about these Explain the entire situation. But once everybody's safe, safety will always come first. Period. No exception. Who's safety? So Their when safety. I have somebody who refuses to identify himself, not everybody's that causes a, a heightened alertness. When I have somebody who gets blah, in my blah, face blah, blah, blah. and wants to blah, call blah, me a blah, Nazi, blah, blah, blah. tell me take him to jail, he's not going to all those things that people do and say, blah, 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 blah. we're going to end up in handcuffs. Because I'm going to go home. Oh, what, what did she hmm. say? Hi. So, and I'm going to do what I got to do to make sure you go home tonight. Even the people. Officer safety. Let's back that up. Great police officer. When I have somebody who gets in my. Nobody got in your face. We're not going to just randomly do this. We are going to. Y'all hear this? We're not just going to randomly do that, even though this is what they randomly do all the time. And I tell you, okay, this is why I get called out here. We're not going to just randomly yes, do are. this. We are going to explain everything. No, you're explain not. the entire situation. No, you're not. But once everybody's safe, safety will always come first. Period. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. So when I have somebody what who is, refuses to identify himself. What does that have to do with safety? That causes... A, a heightened alertness for a police officer. When I have somebody who gets in my face and wants to call me a Nazi. You got somebody that got in your face. He didn't get in your face. You approach him in this entire situation. How does she work in her mind that he got in her face? How does he, how does she work that out when she told him to come towards her? Crazy, crazy, absolutely nuts. Tell me, take him to jail. He's not going to have all those things that people do and say, you're going to end up in handcuffs because I'm going to. So if you go to speaking, she's going to arrest you. Go home tonight. And I'm going to do what I got to do to make sure you go home tonight. Even no, though a no, police no. officer deals with things like this and no, the no. name calling and people who want to get in our face, we still are required to make sure you go home safely. Yeah, but you don't. And you're not understanding what we're trying to tell you on all that. It's nothing to understand. My safety and your safety will come first. And I will tell you everything about an investigation once I know who you are. That's the problem we're stuck at. So I've been here probably a half an hour, 45 minutes with these officers, and you have yet to tell us who you are. Well, I already know you got my ID. That's not the point. Well, here's it. Why? You don't have to tell you who I am. You already know. Okay. Right? You're not understanding. Okay. 
what it is is you want me to just go ahead and... No, no, you're not understanding. Yeah. We're, 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 we're bending over backwards to try to help you at this point. Understand things. They believe... How do you believe that you're bending over backwards, Sonic? Get the fuck. Bro, get out of here. Get out of here. So here, here I'll tell you what Nick yeah. said happened, and then we can just discuss the legal aspects of it. The corrupt judge claimed that there was probable cause for the arrest and charged a $500 bond on top of the impound fees. I hired an attorney for $1,000 and the prosecution dismissed the case. I didn't know how much this encounter would affect me for so many years. It made me lose all faith in trusting police would uphold the law and the boundaries that are set for them. I spent thousands of hours watching other videos and researching the law to try to understand this, but now I simply just wish I had worked harder to find an actual civil rights attorney to sue her, but I didn't. I only recently got the body. Yeah, hold on, yeah. You should have sued her, for sure. Because cause if you don't, now they think that, now they think that they can get away with that with more people, which we do. So let's, It's the worst, man. It is the worst. I hate hearing them try to feed me bullshit. So and, here I'll tell you what Nick said I happened, and then we can discuss the legal aspects of it. The corrupt judge claimed that there was probable cause for the arrest and charged a $500 bond on top of the impound fees. I hired an attorney for $1,000, and the prosecution dismissed the case. I didn't know how much this encounter. So this is how it cost them over $1,500. Uh, to deal with this, of course, of course, it got thrown out because it was it was nothing it was nothing to stand on. But he had to he had he still had to deal with this. Still had to deal with. It. They impounded his vehicle, and he had to bond out of jail. All for not doing. Still, nothing he did. He did nothing wrong. Just because somebody else, somebody called, somebody placed a call, and he ended up in jail at the end of that, at the end of that uh situation, because somebody else called the police with no reasonable suspicion, uh, no crime had been committed, but you have these tyrannical uh, officers out there who don't even think that they're tyrannical after they do something like this. Absolutely. Mentally deranged. It, it's it's crazy. Counter would affect me for so many years. It made me lose all faith in trusting police would uphold the law and the boundaries that are set for them. I spent thousands of hours watching other videos and researching the law to try to understand this. But now I simply just wish I had worked harder to find an actual civil rights attorney to sue her, but I didn't. I only recently got the body cam footage by submitting a request uh, with the department paying the $40 fee. Surprisingly, they still had it after five plus years had passed. But the encounter still affects me today. And when I was arrested, uh, they put me in the mentally unstable section of the jail with a bunch of crazy people and had me do a mental evaluation before I could speak with an attorney or the judge, etc. The jailers said they were told that I'd claimed to be a sovereign citizen, which I hadn't either. When I finally did make a complaint to her commander, quote, in quotes, last month via phone, he cops blamed it away that she didn't need to articulate the reason for her investigation to me, but that still didn't justify her demanding my ID without a reasonable, articulable suspicion. Of course it doesn't, man. He made me lose is the last bit of hope I had in the force, which pushed me to learn how to procure the footage. I love your channel. I'd be really happy. The video is a very good example of surrounds this issue. It's correct.
My bad, y'all. I don't know what just happened to the stream just now. That was crazy. Yeah, something happened uh, with the stream. Y'all, give me a second. Be back at it, though. I'm glad it didn't. The commander said it's correct that a police officer on the scene does not have to articulate to the person when they ask what their reasonable suspicion is for detaining them. However, there still must be some objectively reasonable reasonable suspicion that at least could be articulated after the fact by lawyers and judges for a detention to be legal. What that then requires us to do is to look at the footage and determine um, whether the facts, whether under these facts, it was objectively reasonable for a police officer in the same position as this Amy Moon was to believe that Nick had violated some law. Just to be clear, no state in the land, including Florida, can have a law that says police officers can demand your ID under threat of arrest, even in the absence of any reasonable suspicion that you had committed a crime, because it would violate um, clearly established U.S. Supreme Court precedent. Police officers cannot detain you and thereby invoke the Fourth Amendment Amendment without this objective standard having been met. Therefore, there has to be some sort of information available to the police officer under the totality of the facts that a crime, some crime was committed. It could be a traffic violation. But what's, what's important and sticks out here is there was no alleged traffic violation. Although this this guy was on top of his van at the time, no. this was not a traffic stop. There were no allegations that there were any traffic infractions committed. Usually when you're dealing with, this is more of a bystander situation, oh, the so standard far. is going to be higher for police because they can't just point to some sort of one of the hundreds or thousands of equipment or traffic violations on the books. They have to point to some actual crime that's alleged to have occurred. Now here, a lot of times with, with these cases, we're dealing with a Karen call, basically. Just because somebody calls 911, if they don't allege that a crime has, has been committed, then there can be no reasonable suspicion. And even if they do, there's a case law out there that says that anonymous callers with nothing more and report things to the police, they need to corroborate. And here, best as I can tell, there was some sort of anonymous call that said the two girls that this guy was with looked like they could be underage and perhaps they were scantily clad. Okay, even assuming that that was reasonable suspicion for a some sort of detention to take place, these women were in their 30s. And very clearly, um, this police officer should, or any objectively reasonable police officer, should have been able to tell that these were not underage women. Right. Yet the investigation, the detention continued for like 20, 30 minutes plus. So no crime was committed. And this is Cocoa, Florida. And right across the intercoastal waterway is Cocoa Beach, Florida, where I would be willing to, to guess any particular day, there are hundreds, if not thousands of underage women who are scantily clad and men with them. It could be a father with their daughter. So no crime at all was alleged. And this looked like it was some sort of a park setting. So no crime was alleged, no crime was observed after law enforcement arrived. There is no law in Florida that says when police officers encounter you just to ensure their safety, they get to take your ID, they get to be told your name and run a background check on you. No, that is not the law. And for some weird and ironic, they get to take is no law in Florida that says when police officers encounter you just to ensure their safety, they get to take your ID, they get to be told your name and run a background check on you. No. Crime was observed after law enforcement arrived. There is no law in Florida that says when police officers encounter you just to ensure their safety, they get to take your ID, they get to be told your name and run a background check on you. No. That is not the law. And for some weird and ironic reason, they spend this entire encounter trying to convince this guy that that's what the law is. And if he doesn't respect that incorrect analysis of the law, that he's some sort of sovereign citizen. And that information then makes its way to the jail in retaliation for everything that happened. And that's really what we see here yeah, is or, this is a uh, classic yeah, yeah. case of First Amendment retaliation. This was a non-issue. No crime was occurring. 
but because this guy made any attempt whatsoever, which really wasn't that aggressive, to assert his constitutional rights. I mean, how dare he? He suffered the wrath of this female police officer. And then her underling, who over and over again just tried to force feed this guy incorrect <laughs> constitutional analysis. The female officer admits on her body cam footage over and over again that it's completely unnecessary to arrest this guy. I mean, she has his actual ID in her hand. She knows his name. And yet she is trying to instill some sort of respect for her authority, some sort of respect for the government. And if he if he won't acknowledge it and just say his name, <laughs> then he's going to pay the price and he's going to get arrested, And which she did do completely yes. unnecessary and completely illegal. Yes. So this was a false arrest. So this was this was an illegal detention, which violated the Fourth Amendment. And this also was a false arrest, which violated the Fourth Amendment. Why? Because it was done in the absence of any probable cause. The charge that he was arrested for was resisting without violence. And you can look up the 11th Circuit case law, which governs a federal constitutional law for Florida. And it says that that particular statute requires reasonable suspicion. So if there was no reasonable suspicion, there is no underlying probable cause to arrest this guy without a warrant which there was not. And that's why the prosecutor dismissed the charge. So this is what cops do. You can beat the charge, but you're not going to beat the ride. They're going to take you through the process. It's all about retaliation. And they really do need to be held accountable for this. So we have an illegal detention. Wow. We have a oh, yeah. illegal false arrest. It, is that not what I said uh, earlier? That... It doesn't matter if the charge is bogus and everything going to be dropped. It's the fact that they're going to still make you go through all of that BS. All, all, to, all to prove that you were innocent from the beginning. They didn't prove you were guilty, but you have to prove that you're innocent. You know, that's why I say you... All of that stuff is, you know, you can have all the charges dropped, um, you know, all of that. But it's still, if if you don't, if you don't respect their authority or go for that, they just want to ruin your day, ruin your life, cause as much chaos in your life as they can, and think that they're. And they call that doing you a favor. They they call that doing doing your doing you a favor. That let, we're trying to we're trying to help you out here. We're bit, we're busy going backwards trying to trying to get you to understand that we're gonna violate you. And if you don't want us to violate you, let us violate you. And then we won't violate you so bad. But we're still gonna violate you a lot. <laughs> the, we have First Amendment retaliation and probably a couple of others that I could think of. But the, the most important thing that I think needs to come out of this video is that people need to understand, one, that police officers do not necessarily have to articulate to you at the scene what the reasonable suspicion is, but it does have to objectively exist. There has to be some 911 call or something like that that is sufficient objectively and constitutionally to start some sort of investigation thereby which a police officer could detain you. It can't just be, yeah, this guy looks, this guy looks shady. It can't just be a hunch by a police officer. That's it can't just be a police officer who doesn't like people of a certain skin color. It has to be objectively reasonable information under the totality of the circumstances that some crime had been committed. What does that do? It just creates somebody like Nick who for the past five years plus is just brooding over this. And now he, he, he doesn't like police officers. He doesn't like his government. That's what this results in. And a lot of times, you know what? It does involve female police officers doing this. Look at the video I did in West Virginia wow. that we're now litigating, where it was a female wow. cop who arrested that guy in Walmart. And over and over again, argued with him, just like this woman did in here on the way to jail. 
at one point during the footage, they say hey, to Nick, it's not like we were beating you or something. And that's how a lot of police officers misunderstand the Constitution. They think that they can only violate your constitutional rights if they usually feel is wrong. They don't even think about government and the basic question of, well, am I free to leave or is my government like seizing me and holding me here against my will? I mean, that is an important concept. It's an important concept under the law that they apparently do not teach at police office, at police academies all over the, the country. I mean, this is a supervisor who has been working this job for years, interacting with people. And maybe a lot of times it, it goes very well because people are scared when they're dealing with police officers and they comply. But what happens when you meet someone like Nick, who's not a sovereign citizen, who's just a, he's, I, he's Nick and he, he respects his constitutional rights. And he, he didn't think it was right that he's sitting there with these two women on top of his van overlooking a lake in, in sunny Cocoa, Florida. And the man shows up and they're going to harass him, make him get down off his van make him, you know, treat him like a criminal. You know, I don't blame Nick for for reacting that way. It all just comes back to this concept of freedom is scary. And that No, Nick was big chilling. I can't believe they ruined his day like that, man. I would be so hot, man. They bro, I didn't put it together where I got two, you know, two women chilling with me on top of my van. We overlooking the Late, everything good, vibe good, everything like that. And these <laughs> and these clowns come and ruin that. And I went, I went from being on top of the world to in a cell that quick. No, nah, man. That's what happened to Nick, man. He he was he was on top of the world, and somebody didn't like that. And now they come on, man. Y'all don't y'all don't know, man. To to coordinate that the way it was happening and now now you got to deal with man. Ruin ruin <laughs> ruin my boy Nick. That is <laughs> an extremely out. important concept. People need to understand. Yeah, it's easy to just hand over your ID. It's easy to just tell them your name, but it's always a slippery slope. If we lose the right to do that, if the government can detain us for any reason whatsoever, really, there we are pre-Revolutionary War, where the, the British Army could detain us without a warrant. They could come in our home, in our home without a warrant. There, there were general warrants that were not specific to me. That's where we will end up, and that's why these little battles are important. I think so if you like I learning your rights for these little battles police officers, or random citizens who like to hang out on top of your van, make sure to subscribe at civilrightslawyer.com and also here almost at 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. Man. Oh, count yourself. I know Hillsborough County something else. That would be amazing. Uh, if every place. And what, what's crazy about that is California has so many other crazy laws like you're gonna you're gonna need to be an attorney in California. Yeah, Marcy, it was you that was saying that. Yeah, they jealous of him, man. Why they whoever that was was straight hating on Nick, man. I think this this officer was hating on him too. What you what you doing out here living <laughs> living like this, man? Okay. I I was I was Nick get the nine one one call too. That would be even even better.
Yeah, man. I hate enterprise, but honestly, I don't think marches are gonna do it because they don't care about marches. They they care about power and control and money. So um that's what we have to take back. We have to take back the power, control, and the money, and then things will, you know, start to change. But just marching. You know, that's a good display of unity, but it's 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 not. I don't see that changing anything because all they look at that, they look at that march and say, "Okay, y'all can march. Y'all just bet y'all better keep it peaceful, for we or we won't." You know, that's the type of attitude they have when it comes to protests and marching. Keep it peaceful, or we won't. It's it's the type of vibe they have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In, in Florida, it's still, you know, you, we do have a lot more freedoms in Florida than I know it's in other states, but um, it's still tyrannical. You still find tyrants everywhere. What does that say? My office manager wants me to change my name to, to Angry Yeti. <laughs> now, Gator, you gotta you gotta be aware of that when you go out there auditing or you go out there exercising your First Amendment right. I don't even like to say, you know, we're going out there auditing. We're really we're just uh, citizens off the street uh, deciding to exercise our rights. But once you start doing that, and they send you like an angry Yeti now, those calls that you, that, when they call on you, remember, they're going to describe you as that angry Yeti, and the officers are going to approach you as an angry, as you are being an angry Yeti. That's how they're going to, that's the type of energy they're going to come at you with. So just be aware of that. I like that, man. Just, just be aware of that because most, most of the cops are already, they already scary. That's the thing about it. Like, they already be so scary. And, and it, like, they, every scene that they approach, they, they just scary. He, I can understand it if it was an actual, an actual high alert call or it was some reason for you to be on high alert. But a lot of times, oh, you got this guy, oh, he's filming in the building. What, what, does he have any weapons? No, uh, he only has a camera and he's, what, has, has he threatened anybody? No, but he's kind of talking back to us when we're trying to tell him not to, you know, he, he's, now he's being hostile because he won't, like that, that, they start dressing it up and then here goes policy enforcement arriving. Well, we got a call and Blah, 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 blah. Four years, bro. Plus, Okay. I'm a civil rights journalist with redress skills that will share your ego. Yeah. We need that. We need more citizens like that. That's and we're we're the we're the the citizens that that, that catch them off guard. We're the ones that they uh, oh we got one of <laughs> we got one of those that knows his rights. Ugh. Hate those. That's a favorite. Who I hate. I hate those. The ones that know their rights, man. Ugh. they're so they're so difficult. They don't just let us violate them, man. God. Why it can't just be easy like all the other ones that just let us run all over them, man? Why you gotta make why you gotta make this difficult, man? Why you gotta make us do some work? When you meet me, you'll understand. Cool. Yeah, man. 
I really like uh, meeting people in person anyway, because, you know, the internet is just internet. Either way that that ends up right. All right, y'all, we're coming up on about two and a half hours. So um, we went, this this stream was really, um, really, really impactful. Watching that first video uh, really messed me up. So we tried. I tried to balance that out with um with to a priest channel. Uh it kind of helped, but it still didn't really still didn't really uh make me feel that much better, but it did help lighten up my mood a little bit. And then we watched this last one of just pure foolishness. At least, you know, somebody didn't get their neck broken, but you know, still the violations that happen, the way that they cops explain about it, it's just man. And this this stuff is never ending. It's never ending. Well, dude, like I said, man, when I when I'm back when I'm back uh over in that area, I'm definitely hit you up. Kind of capture with what appears to be a decent officer but it's hard to tell i'm so damn leery due to what i've experienced yeah i know what you mean like you be thinking like hmm it could be good like when i when i talked to the the chief back in uh aventura um he seemed like a decent uh he, he seemed to be decent but you never know it could be something different when they go back to the back office and talk to people it could be something different so I never put my trust in it. I just let it be what it is, you know, until until they show me something different. But yeah, but yeah, I appreciate y'all. Uh, hashtag stop muting body cam footage. Uh, hashtag stop killing us. RP uh, Elijah McClain. So. Please, a lot of the public needs to pay attention to. The public needs to pay attention to if they have cops that disrespect the Constitution when they vote for mayor's council members and sheriffs. Very true. Very true. But, you know, most people don't know their rights, so they don't know that they're being violated. So it's up to families to let their families know about their constitutional rights because schools aren't doing it, you know, so got to do it at home and home is where it always starts. But again, hashtag stop me from body cam footage, hashtag stop killing us, RP, Elijah McClain. I appreciate everybody for being here. Um, it really means a lot. We, we're rolling up on eight, 8K uh, subscribers. We came a long way from yeah man we came a long way um definitely appreciate everybody's support and yeah we're gonna keep going uh and you know we're gonna we're gonna keep at it we're not just gonna let you know our rights just continue to be violated we got people standing up we're gonna keep standing up and yeah that's what it's gonna be awb i'm out Again, I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all probably some. It, it may be later today or tomorrow, but yeah, see y'all soon. Appreciate y'all. AWB, I'm out.